When I went back to Washington to Capitol Hill a few months after having been president of NYU and saw some of my former colleagues, they said, John, what's it like being a university president? I said, well, you know, when I was here, I made a lot of speeches. I was a public person. I raised money. I resolved conflicts. I wrestled with massive egos. In short, I feel very much at home. <laughs> My late father, a Greek immigrant, told his children, I'll never leave you much money, which was true, but I will leave you all a first-class education, which was also true. And my mother was not of Greek origin, but an Indiana public school teacher. And her father was a professor of classical history in Indiana. So I grew up in a family for whom education was central. In 1958, I was first elected to Congress. I served with six presidents, three Republicans, Eisenhower, Nixon, Ford, three Democrats, Kennedy, Johnson, and Carter. And so I was there on the Education Committee when we wrote Head Start, the Pell Grants, College Student Loans, the Elementary Secondary Education Act. So education was part of my life as a uh, legislator. And then in 1980, I could see that I was probably going to lose the election. In the Sunday Times, I noted wanted president of New York University. So on the Wednesday morning after my defeat, I telephoned the mayor of the city of New York, Edward I. Koch. And uh, Ed said, I'm sorry, John, uh, what are you going to do now? I said, I'd like to be president of New York University. And Koch said, uh, alluding to our just defeated presidential nominee, if Mondale doesn't want it, I'm for you. <laughs> NYU, when I arrived, uh, I perceived as fundamentally a regional New York, New Jersey, Connecticut commuter institution. And my goal was to transform it into a national and international residential research university. And I don't want to say that uh, a decision was made at a particular point in time. Eureka, we're going to change this university but having been exposed to a wide range of colleges and universities in this country. My view was, we're in New York City. Uh, this is the greatest city in the world. Uh, let's make this uh, the greatest university possible, and we can, we can do more, we can do better. I suppose there's also the motivation, given one's origins and background and uh, uh, family and education, to want to do better, to be the best that you can be. Particularly significant, I think, was our fundraising capacity. So I announced a target of $1 million a week for 100 weeks in private contributions. And we did that. And then in 1984, I announced a new goal of $1 billion in private contributions to New York University by the year 2000. That is to say, 15 years. And we did that, but in 10 years. Uh, our vice president in charge of fundraising was Naomi Levine, a wonderful woman with whom I worked very closely. And with those funds and investing them, I think, wisely in student housing, in faculty, uh, in deans, in student assistants, uh, in, in laboratory facilities, uh, we were able to make that transformation. And I take particular pride in the establishment of international programs because that enables us to reach out. We are truly uh, an international university. From my perspective, the importance of international studies it represents an open door for New York University to the rest of the world. And I think that uh, the rising uh, strength of the university the rising visibility of NYU represents a magnet to bring alumni back to Washington Square to say, wow, what's happening around here? So you see, I took advantage of my earlier career to open doors to New York University that might not otherwise have happened. I traveled all over the United States talking about NYU, and I traveled to other countries. And I also made it my business to move around the city as much as I could to meet people in differing walks of life and in leadership positions. 
that's another way of communicating to others that New York University is here and means business. Those are some of the steps that a university president can do to lift uh, the sights of his colleagues on the faculty and the deans uh, and the students. You have to have a sense of mission. You have to have a sense of passion for what you're doing. You have to have a, a conviction that what you're doing is significant. And I think that's crucial. This is a university that is so powerful intellectually and academically. And it is a product, I think, of a coming together of influential and generous trustees, of committed deans and faculty, and hardworking vice presidents and staff. We could not have made these advances without the philanthropic support of people like Larry and, and Bob Kish, George Hyman, Martin Lipton, Larry Silverstein. At the same time, I relied on Jay Oliva, Lynn Brown, John O'Connor, and Michelle O'Connor. And you put all, all that combination together and you're going to attract first class students. Also, we're part and parcel of, uh, of New York City and I think that we derive great strength from that fact. We draw energy from being in the heart of a throbbing city and that makes being at NYU very exciting. No wonder we have so many thousands of young people wanting to come here and study. The world is a big place. There's still a lot to see and to do and I want to see NYU lead the way.